Aleluia. Aleluia. I greet everyone in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to believe we are all happy to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We can all rise on our feet. Just greet the person next to you.
I can stand secure. Now upon my heart, upon my heart, the truth that sets me free, sets me free. According to promises, be unto me, be it unto me, be it unto me. Oh yes, according to your way. Let's sing together. According to your promises, to your promise. I can stand secure. I can stand secure. Now upon my heart. Now upon my heart. The truth that sets me free. Sets me free. According to promises. Be one more time, be it unto me. Be it unto me. Oh, yes. According to your promises. To your promises. I can stand secure. Can stand secure. Now upon my heart. Truth sets me free according to your promise. Be unto me. Hallelujah. How many are saying, Be it unto me? Hallelujah. We want to speak like Mary the Virgin. Hallelujah. She said, be it unto me according to your word, according to your promises. Praise the Lord. We can give a mighty hand of praise unto the Lord. Supernatural place, dish up. Lazarus had a voice, though dead in the tomb, and someone had the same, though yet a boy. and Paul who were changed in their way they hear a voice of God from a supernatural place into a supernatural place hearing God's voice. seeing his face, seeing his face. Heavenly, words. heavenly words of light of light have shone have shone for the bright what a reflection what a reflection of glory and grace Of glory and grace in the dark of night. In the dark of night, God sent a light, God sent a light. to quicken us, to quicken us. 
once again this morning that we can hear from thee O oh blessed Savior O oh Father this same voice we know that it called Lazarus out of the grave O oh Father he had O oh Father decayed he had O oh Lord God Jesus Christ he had already suffered corruption O oh Father but your voice, O oh Lord God, it came and raised him up. That quickening power, O oh Father, 
and our faith, O Lord God, it's giving, O Father, confidence, trust, because we know you did it for Lazarus, the same you did it even unto us, O Father, though we were dead in the world, though, O Lord God, Jesus Christ, seen us unworthy, you came and looked for us. You came and called us, O oh Father, by the, that very same voice. Your grace, O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, you justified us. You took us, you sanctified us. O oh Lord God, how you prepared us, O oh Father, how you even filled us with your Holy Spirit to be called your sons and your daughters. We are very thankful for your grace, Almighty Savior. Oh Lord God, your sons and your daughters today, they are in here, oh Father. Some are live streaming, oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, waiting, oh Father, to hear from thee, waiting, oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, to enter, oh Father, into those heavenly places, oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, to be in that anointing that spirit oh father where oh lord god we know that everything all oh, doubts all oh, fears are going to be taken away all oh, answers all oh, questions are going to be answered all oh, solutions are going to be granted strength is going to be given to those that are weary father we pray oh lord god as we say may you be with us oh father as we are ready to worship thee to sing your songs of zion this morning lord god even when your word shall come we know oh father that we shall be ready which our hearts are going to be prepared our ears are going to be circumcised oh father even now that we are not going to miss any of your instructions this morning. May you be, O oh Father, with the song leader. Lead him, anoint him, O oh God. Even our dear pastor, O oh Father, we even pray for him this morning. That, O oh Lord God, that very same anointing, O oh Father, that has been upon him, O oh Lord God. May it continue, O oh Father, to guide us, to lead us, O oh God, that we may continue to see your face. We may continue, O oh Lord God, to enter into those supernatural places, those supernatural realms, O oh Lord God. O oh Father, that even our eyes can see better, can see, O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, the same way your prophet saw, O oh Father, when he went to that other side, O oh Lord God, your past, O oh Heavenly Savior, as we ask, O oh Father, that everything that we are about to do, O oh God, may it be done, O oh Father, with your guidance, with your leadership, that, O oh Lord God, we might not do anything in vain. We pray as we praise your holy name this morning, surrendering Oh, our thoughts, our lives, our bodies unto thee. May you wake with us, oh Father. May you save us this morning. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Holy One. Amen. Hallelujah. We can give a mighty hand of praise unto the Lord. Let's just say, I want to thank you. F. Praise the Lord. How many want to thank the Lord? We want to thank you.
to thank you. I want to thank you for the rest of my life. Let's clap our hands. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the rest. So I want to thank you, my Lord. To thank you, my Lord. To thank you, Jesus. to be in the presence of Almighty God. Yeah, we just want to start it again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel like we are not. Praise the Lord in the same place. Let's start. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the rest. I want to thank my Lord, I want to thank you. Oh, I want to thank you. Oh, I want to thank you oh, for the rest. Oh, I want to thank you, my Lord. Let's clap our hands and sing, all of us. My Lord, I want to thank you, Jesus.
but Job was saving a lot. Hallelujah. But he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The Christ. Testimony that I want to share with you about the journey that I had uh, uh, in the sickness that I was having. I believe many of you, you know that I was diagnosed with uh, a certain disease. It was uh, tuberculosis. When uh, it's, it's regarded as one of the uh, great diseases. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I started um, feeling sick around January. I was in Jobek. Hallelujah. The we are around March. I mean around uh, February. I came back around February. Uh, around March, that's when I visited the clinic. They diagnosed me with a TB. They described that the treatments are not easy. According to them, I was not supposed to be standing here. They said I should be taking treatments for six months. After six months, then they can say I'm now completely healed. I announced to the church. I mean, Bafunzi Nachibizo. I announced to, uh, I, I communicated with our pastor and also to the church. It was announced in the group. I believe I believe that the saints prayed. Even the church uh, delegations arrived at my home. And there are some prayers that we made. Those prayers were done at the beginning of March. It was just after I was diagnosed that I have got TB. 
uh, when the saints were praying. Uh, the church delegations that came, they spoke some statements that I have noted. They said that we believe. They said they believe the brother can be healed before the appointed time. They prayed after they said those words. After two weeks. After two weeks, I returned back to the clinic. According to the operations of the nurses, I was not supposed to come back after two weeks. After two months. I should have come back after two months. After two weeks. The person who, uh, wrote that I should come back after two weeks. That's after the prayers were already offered. Uh, they took the first test um, after the uh, two weeks after the prayers were made. According to them, they wanted to check how um, are the, whether the treatments are working or not. Uh, there was nothing they were expecting uh, except that. Uh, when the results came back, uh, they declared that the, the disease is no more. Hallelujah. Uh, the most interesting, interesting part is this one. After a, a month, uh, when I went back after a month, I came across the other nurse. That nurse, when she checked the results, she found out that they were negative. conversion. Or she declared that I'm now completely healed. They just gave me some medication to just continue using. Then they removed all the restrictions that they had imposed upon me, including social distancing. Then she gave me another date that I should come back. It only took a week. When I went back after a week, I came across another nurse. She specialized with this kind of disease. They said she's a specialist when it comes to uh, TB. Uh, my file was not there at that time. It, it got lost. It means I, I was the one now explaining um, all the procedures, uh, also the stages in which I am. When I explained to this nurse, that now I'm here to be um, tested, at the last test, to confirm for the second time that now I'm departing for good. They closed the book of the clinic and they said it's not possible. They said it's not possible for you to say that if you are saying you started around March. I tried to explain when they looked at me they thought I want to run away from the treatments I explained that according to the results from your laboratory and according to the writings of one of your nurses it means that I'm no longer having TB. Then they were compelled to go and call another nurse. 
who was there the time I was first tested at the clinic. When she was called before she said many things. She said, Makuba, don't lie to us. You don't even have three months since you came here at the clinic. It's not possible for you to be declared healed. Then have an there was a negotiation, a great negotiation. I'm not going back. Until I explained to them that I'm not going back. Until you call the, uh, those who work at the lab. Even this nurse who has been having my case. That they must explain that the process, the, their own processes are not correct. Then I will uh, uh, agree to start with the treatment from the beginning. So, then they wanted to give me medication again. And then I refused. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the, the, the supervisor of the clinic now was compelled to come. When she came and uh, uh, listened to the situation, she explained something that was um, comprehensible. She said, uh, it's not possible that at this date you are now dismissed at the clinic. I said, the one who has made a mistake to declare me completely ill is so, one of your nurses. Then they did not want to take uh, the responsibility. Then I also not uh, agreed to go back. Then they said, uh, you must go and complete the medications that you were given. And then you must come back afterwards. I went back home. I was taking those treatments. When I was at home, they made a meeting that they may arrange their own things that when I come back, then their things will now be in order. When I went back, the manager herself offered a result from the lab. She was um, having the results from the laboratory. You know, uh, Jenna, when I entered inside, no, 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 family. I was uh, with my family. Because Then they were surprised of what is going on. Then there was no more negotiations. Then they were explaining that we wanted him to start afresh with the medication. Because what he was explaining, it was not making sense. Then they were now speaking, holding the results. They said, uh, truly, true, the results are negative. Because of that, we are now going to declare him uh, completely healed. Because of that, I thank God so much. that uh, something that was supposed to take six months uh, because of the prayers of the saints so, yeah, only two, two weeks. it only took about two weeks I really appreciate that I really appreciate God bless you Hallelujah.
So we can just take, we serve a miracle awaking God. Hallelujah. So you can just take a mic and have that song. Hallelujah. We can all rise on our feet and after that we have special songs.
dia waram cipambano mucizi di mute Zither 
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, yeah, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. There is one in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sing it together now.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can give another mighty hand of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a singing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give another mighty hand of praise. Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So I just feel like we can just continue with that song. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But uh, we'll sing it some other time. Praise the Lord. Let's rise on our feet. Hallelujah. Blessed are we. Praise the Lord. I want to take this song. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Can you see? Wonderful, merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer. Comfort a keeper. Spirit we long to embrace.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our hearts are always hunger for. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Let's take the song. I'm looking ahead to kissing. I'm looking ahead to that glorious city where I shake the head of those gone on before me. I can still feel the same tenderness that's carrying me will lead me home. So Lord, I'm looking at the sing I'm looking at Shake the hands of those gone on before me. I can still feel the same tenderness carrying me will lead me on. in the battle they are wounded in the battle Lord that I brothers take each other's hand brothers take each other's hand sisters do the same sisters do the same thing to lift each other in prayer Through. And those skin ones, and those skin when destroy this body. I've got another one waiting. I've got another one waiting for me. So, Lord, fill my soul with the Holy Ghost and cleanse me and make me whole. I'm looking. How 
many are looking ahead to that glorious seat. Let's give a mighty end of praise unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who want to say? In a Maya, Lord, I want to be a Christian. In a Maya, in a Maya. Be a creature in a Maya, in a Maya. Let's all sing, say in my heart, in my heart. Oh, in a Maya. Lord, I want to be a creature in a Maya. To be a Christian Lord, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Oh, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart. Do the things 
speaking about judgment begins in the house of the Lord. So I wanted us to start that one. Judgment begins in the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. still happy. I believe we are happy. Amen. There's no better place to be but to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. David one time said, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we believe we are in the right place.
take this song, hallelujah. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hallelujah. How many are saying, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry today. Praise the Lord. While on others thou art calling, please do not pass me by, hallelujah. So I believe it's our prayer today. Dish up, say, Lord, do not pass me by. Praise the Lord. We've been inviting our pastor. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Yeah. to you, 
You've got things you're going through in life. Questions and you're looking for answers. Problems and you need solutions. Conditions at work. At home. Even in your own family. But today you're saying, Lord, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Let it be my day of visitation. Let it not just be an ordinary religious day. But I want divine impact that my spirit may bear record with your spirit that something true has happened in my being. If that's your desire, don't hesitate to trust God. We want to remember Sister Mienda. She's requesting prayers on behalf of the son she leads Mienda. He's having souls on one side of the neck down to his chest. And she believes God can do something. And then we also have got Sister Nechunda. She's brought her CV and she wants it to be prayed for that it may find favor as she's going to submit it for a job. How many believe the Lord can do that? If you also have a need, don't hesitate to raise your hand. Also have a phone that will be dedicated. Praise be to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a blessed honor to come in your august presence in a world that is so fast influenced by so many sources demons in disguise diversified for deception and yet Lord we can come to this place where there is no contamination where the purity and virginity of your spirit can be ushered in our souls we often call it a secure channel, a channel of communication, a channel of inspiration, a channel that Abel found when by faith he recognized what kind of sacrifice he had to offer. And dear God, we stand with that channel, not this fourth dimension of televisions, radio, internet, polluted demonic perverted by the enemy himself but through this which we can term a divine umbilical cord that only goes to they that are connected to the lifeline they that were conceived of Elohim through it father we are receiving instructions encouragement we are receiving strength to look at life with divine perspective and Lord it's greater than rubies honor or anything that this life can offer just to sit at your feet and to hear your word like that prostitute woman Lord would say it, even the dogs still eat from the crumbs she had recognized the value of who she was talking to that even the crumbs are sufficient. But we are grateful that we are not even taking of the crumbs. You say this is the children's bread, our bread, spiritual food in due season. Take it, eat it, you declared. Shall be sweet in thine mouth and bitter in thine belly. Access to eternal life. That tree of life that man was once barred from, now thou hast given us full authority as it has been placed before us in plain view. And we are thankful, Lord Jesus, that we are walking in the footsteps of Elohim, the bloody footprints taking us back to where we belong, out of amnesia, transcending dimensions. What a great honor and privilege to walk with this kind of mindset and consciousness, the mind of Christ, 
in a world that is perverted and influenced by education, the systems of science, the era where knowledge has become so accessible, just right on your fingerprints, you can get knowledge about almost any subject. But Lord, you are giving us a different knowledge. Not the one of Cain, but the one of Abel by faith. Amen. That which men cannot teach the other. That which religion cannot give to the other. Amen. But something, oh God, that is supernatural. Amen. And we want to thank you, gracious Lord, Amen. for your love and kindness. Even all the hands that are raised all across the building. I firmly believe there is something of God in them. That's why they're here. Even the hands that are raised, it's faith, Lord, that you are capable to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think. No doubt we have tried our minds. We have tried our plans. No doubt we have tried men of like passion as we are to help us. But we have come to a conclusion that you are the best and you are our hope. You are our remedy, the only remedy. That's why, Lord, we come mastering the thought of human ability in submission, O oh God, that you take over every soul and every being and establish them upon your present will that every family, every person may walk worthy of this vocation under your definite and direct administration. Oh, that's our design, our prayer, King of Kings. Even now, oh God, a sister me and has brought a request on behalf of Chilizi. Dear God, as a mother, we look back and see Auntie Jemima. We look back and see Sister Hetty Wright. The love of a mother, even that deer that was trapped, even, oh God, by a whistle. Lord, you could speak through your prophet to show us what a mother love can do. And I believe, oh God, you can honor the request of every mother that carried a child nine months. And Lord, as she presents Chilizi, we back up her faith in the name of Jesus Christ. This condition, oh God, that is affecting him, whatever the source is, we are binding it by the blood and casting the influence to the pits of hell. We are not worried whether he believes this message or not. With Eti Ride, the sons were not believers. With Auntie Jemima, the sons were not believers. But you honor the prayer of a mother. And I know you can do the same even right now. That you dismiss, oh God, every problem in his life. And we also even pray for his faith. That he can also believe. As the hour is late and the time is at hand. Oh God, we know you are capable. May you grant it even for her and our brother. We commit, oh God, even the same grace that was given to Brother Nelson after prayer was offered. We know, as we are grateful, that you can do the same in every other situation. Oh, let it be, oh Father, even upon the hands that are raised, if they be sick in our midst, Lord, may they connect with your love, connect with the testimony, connect with what you've done and know that you can do for them as well. Spoken and unspoken conditions. May you supply healing, I pray. Even Sister Nature Wunder have faith to bring a CV here. That's a great deal, oh God. Some people, they trust in their education. Others in their wisdom. Some even end up in corruption trying to find their ways to get jobs. But when you see a daughter bringing a CV here, Father, it's a sign that she has no other place to run to. And I pray that you honor the faith and grant her heart's desire in the bloody name of Jesus Christ. Even this phone, this gadget that's been brought for dedication, Father, we see families broken by phones. We see people taken to hell by phones. We see the devil controlling these gadgets. But I pray even for the owner of this that has brought it even to this place that you may anoint them, O oh God, that they may not be controlled but control this gadget that it may serve your purpose and make life a little easier for them. Oh Father, we are grateful and we are thankful that you have done it 
and you are more than able. Thank you for hearing our prayers as we are appreciating the service today. Speak to us. Speak through me. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let me not speak of my own, but undertake for me. As I dedicate and commit everything into your faithful hands. Appreciating the wonderful songs of Zion, the beautiful worship and atmosphere that's been created. Indeed, something good is in store. May not, may not any enemy come and block your children from being blessed partakers of divine nature. Is my prayer and my petition. Not forgetting the invisible audience, those who are streaming, those in the tent. May you grant the same grace and mercy even unto them. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody, say amen. Praise be to God as we give a hand of praise. Shall we temporarily take our seats? I greet everyone in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Trusting we are all happy to be in the house of the Lord. How many are happy this day? Amen. Wonderful atmosphere. God bless you, musicians. No, it's good when God gives, find their place. Just thoroughly blessed in the office there. Just by, you know, the way the worship was going on. May you preserve it and keep it that way. God bless you, Raji. How many missed him, eh? <laughs> Amen. And uh, he's not coming apologetically. Eh? <laughs> he's really coming back. To say, I'm back. Eh? And Brahma Zutu, God bless you so much. That was beautiful worship and we appreciate it. And there comes a time when you break the nominal boundaries. And you worship as you are led by the Spirit. And that's the kind of the worship the Father is looking for. In truth and in spirit. Truth meaning the message of the hour. And the Spirit meaning the revelation. Praise be to God. So we appreciate it so much. And um, we... I want to welcome some visitors, yeah. Um, Sister Renai came with, um, is it Sister Renai, Renai or Sister Renai? Is it Sister Renai or the other Sister Renai? Okay, oh, it's you who came with them, all right. So Sister Renai, Renai came with uh, Brother Nifale Puluso. Mu, brother Nifale Puluso. Puluso. And then Mu Virwan Divo. Nandivo. Nduo. Nduo. Yes, Mu Virwa. And then Sister Zuya. And Brother Muta. I'll ask them to stand. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Yeah. Happy to have you in church, all of you. I trust it to be a blessing for you. Let's give a hand of praise as they sit down. It's like uh, they're in a competition, eh? And these ones came with Brother George. <laughs> There's Brother Azania, Brother Tuanano, and Brother Mangani Lungi. I'll ask them to stand. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Happy, happy to have you in service and we trust it to be a blessing as well. Let's give a hand of praise. You may have the seats. No. This is a good courtship, eh? <laughs> you know, when people are engaged and they're saying, I want to see how many you come with. Eh? <laughs> we love that. Keep it up, eh? 
I wish others would join your race. Eh? By the grace of God. Such really God bless you. Uh, you're back. Holiday. No, we appreciate. Let's welcome Sister Shuli. Um, we are always having your own life. I'm sure if you see Sister Shuli, that's Sister Shuli. Eh? Um, if you remember she first came with brother Mashamba and she was in grade 12 right yes now she is in second year third no it can be third year <laughs> people are growing up eh? now she is in third year by God's grace is a strong message believer so never take lightly when these young people come through because look at where she is now by the grace of God so we certainly appreciate that by God's grace and um, I think um, everybody else God bless you beloved yeah, good to see everybody. Eh? God bless you, beloved. Everybody, we appreciate you so much. And then today, you know, I was supposed to continue with the subject. Sovereignty without revelation is diabolic, it's satanic. An order without which there is no rapture. It was more like a family because we were dedicating it to Father's Day. We managed to talk to wives. We spoke to husbands. And we spoke to fathers, mothers. And we also spoke to children. Is that right? And I believe everybody got their portion. Uh, the further expansion of the same is more or less what was in family series. But the heart of the season is to understand the order of God without which there is no rapture and is the threefold purpose which was at the back part of his mind and number one he wanted to have his fullness in Christ the visible expression of his invisibility and he wanted to have preeminence in the body of believers and to restore marriage as it was in Eden. So it was simply all that was in him. He wanted to pour it into Christ. And all that was in Christ, he wanted to pour it into the church. And when it was in the church, he wanted to be in fellowship with the church under Edenic conditions, Adamic dominion. That's the millennium. So that's God's threefold purpose. Starting with the masculine. Old Testament, Testament the feminish, New Testament, Testament and both masculine and feminish together married in a restored Eden. And every family must be lined up like that. Every local church, every assembly must be lined up like that. And the body of Christ must also be lined up like that. And I'm sure we, we learned that last Sunday how all these things are interconnected. And if you didn't really catch it, you go revise. But it's basically what I just summarized. But today, I, I was just looking at the things that were happening. And I thought, well, maybe we could just plunge into, you know, 
certain things. Especially if you look what's taking place around the global village. Sure, you saw African leaders go to Russia, Ukraine. The scandals that were connected to them visits. The attempt of people to stop them or to mediate between the war in Ukraine and Russia. The soon coming uh, meeting, the BRICS meeting. The great debate around the presence of Vladimir Putin in South African context. And lately, I'm sure you heard of the mutiny, um, possible coup that's happening between the Wagner Group in Russia, which is a private military company. And then um, how the um, alleging that they were attacked by the Russian Air Force and they want to topple the defense minister and then they are headed for Moscow so that they can take over and currently they've managed to secure according to media reports certain parts of Russia and but Vladimir Putin has made a statement and he has actually declared it to be treason and then there's a warrant of arrest that's been sent against the Wagner leader. Vladimir Putin has and this is actually fresh. I'm sure this took place yesterday and this is the second day they are talking about it. So we, we've got uh, limited comments yet. But I believe, I just thought it's important that we can plunge into it. And then see what Brother Branham says about some of these things. Because, you know, sometimes we fail to realize that certain privileges we have, they exceed what we are admiring certain people out there having. Yes, there are many sorcerers, astrologers, wise men, but there's only one Daniel that is able to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. So you don't have to be intimidated by the mouth or the the, the, the numbers of the astrologers or spiritual people flooding on the internet. Eh? What that the internet it's like each day a preacher crops up. Eh? <laughs> like every day a new church starts with a different name, a new prophet, a new apostle, different titles and people are bringing knowledge out there now biblical knowledge is no longer complicated to get because of internet so anyone can be a preacher by googling without even a call from God just to say today I want to preach at a funeral, what must I preach? They give you the scripture. They give you the tone of speaking. Even the conclusion with a prayer to say you pray like this. It's right there on the internet. Right there. Is it right? So now you begin to see there are many spiritual people, wise men, 
But the showdown always comes. Not with miracles. All the things that they are doing. When it comes to accessing the threefold purpose of God. To say, tell me what I dreamt. I myself, I have forgotten my dream. But I want you to tell me what I dreamt. And interpret the dream I have forgotten. Then that's when you see internet cannot work. You can't Google that. <laughs> to say what did Nebuchadnezzar dream? Or what will happen tomorrow? Then you have to have a relationship with God. And that's where the dividing line is especially with the message of the hour don't be intimidated by the so many things that are rising up there is a separating line and we are walking right upon that line by the grace of God can I get an amen for that? So by God's grace, I would need your undivided attention. And then I trust uh, I may not take much time so that I may not overfeed you. But by God's grace, I don't mind continuing on this knot. So may the Lord bless you. Let's, let, let's rise to off it. I'll take two scriptures. Revelation chapter 19. And um, Revelation chapter 20. Now verse um, 11, the Bible says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Davana lita durulu atam, hambo rimbi dichena, o juro kayo upi, afurpe diao, wango, achisengisa, namusi achirwa, uita zofanera. This is Christ, Christ, who was impersonated by the white horse rider in Revelation 6. The first seals opens with deception. And a white horse rider. Whom scholars of the denominations and nominal world have called Christ. An expression that they are ignorantly worshipping the devil, thinking they are worshipping God. Because if you don't know what the first seal is, then you know not what you are worshipping. If you call Satan Christ, he says you know not what you are worshipping. Christ says we Jews, we know who we worship. It's in truth, it's in spirit. In truth, it's not speaking the truth. It's the revealed word of the hour. And spirit is what's unlocking the revelation of the season. Not speaking in tongues, prophesying or performing miracles. So here is Christ in Revelation 19. So William Branham says, when you see him in Revelation 3, 14, he says the church goes up and you don't see the church again until chapter 19. So anything in between like what you see there you need spiritual insight to identify what it is. Now his eyes were as a flame of fire on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Mato awe anga kawuya muriro, kato yawe, unama zanga manji, abu hosi, una zina, lomaro oline, lisivena ane alidiva, aradi asi NPH. Now we preached about Rufunzanga, new name, true name, 
Same name. So I won't go into this. This is the name that is in the rock beneath the rock. Where we speak about that hidden mana. That's where it is. Stay, look on this while I go west. So it's, it's knowing as you were known. It's a view from the other side, looking at your body in time from your body, theophanic body. And we know heaven is not up there. <laughs> it's not like the people in NASA that are having a view from Mars or, or the moon, a view from the other side. We know heaven is in you. He's a writer. And that man we're talking about is in you. So many times people look from this way, that way. And they don't see right. But when you look from inside out, you see how vile and useless this body is. It's reduced to a mere carcass. Is that right? And he was clogged with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So without the word, you don't have him. That's why you must understand. Spirituality is not emotionalism. Spirituality is the word. A word in progression, in continuity, and in season. Because everybody is having a Bible. But it's not everybody that is having Jesus. Though he is the word, he is not just the words on a paper. He is the word made flesh. Is the word in time, the word in your day, like the message of Noah. It was the word of God, but it can't apply to our day. We don't need an ark because water is not the one that will destroy the world. It is fire. So we need the word in season to give us a provided place, a way of escape, and the position that God has declared will render protected anyone that's under. And, verse 14, we're speaking about Christ, 11 to 14, to, to 13. Now, 14 introduces another character. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Mbiata Duru Yamutevera Yonamera Zimbi Chwana O Ambarwa Masira Machena Asinachika. Now this army is, hey, is the bride of Christ. The, of Christ. the people that will be raptured but one of the are the race. people that will come back with him. The one of the William Rauna. Now remember we've got three comings but to redeem his bride, to claim his bride, and with his bride. So he comes to redeem them. He comes to claim what he has redeemed. And he comes back with the bride. Is that making sense? So now this is the time he comes back with the bride. Which bride? A people that saw his appearance and they received a whisper from a mighty angel that I'm going to take you in a moment and in a twinkle of an eye. Make yourself ready. And then when you make yourself ready, you'll be caught up. He's a writer. But now when you come here, praise be to God, this is what the world 
is expecting to be the second coming. Is a writer. Is a writer. But for you, it's not like that. Because he had already come to you. He has appeared to you. And you're already raptured. Is a writer. Is it making sense? So the world is expecting to see him for the first time. But they are surprised to say, what is happening? We thought there was supposed to be a rapture. So it took place. And you knew it not. And this is the evidence. The people who were raptured are coming back with me. Is it a clear language I'm talking? Is it understandable? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Udova Ponda, Wufenderoni, Aveni, Yabuhari, Hambiti, Zamuzimu, Mubusa Ote. And I saw an angel, that's another sin. There we saw Christ, we saw the bride. And this is a different scene from verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Dawana mumwe murumwa oima kaduba avizereranga ipile huru achi amba na manoni ote afupa ubukati halita duru ari. Idani ni kubanga ne chimi manichi huru chamzi. That he may eat the flesh of the kings and the flesh of the captains and the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Now, this is a supper time. And the people that are supper now are the people that rejected the call of God at supper time. Remember, there was an invitation, come. And people had excuses. Until you went to check from the streets. Jacob's, Rehab's, Zacchaeus. He took blind Batimias. And the rest were having excuses, religious excuses. Then, because they rejected to be part of the supper, they became the supper. Judgment. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and the armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the now watch what's taking place. This war you see here is the war that began in heaven. Revelations chapter 12. He's a writer. There was war in heaven. And the cause of the war it is because according to the book of Isaiah iniquity was found in the heart of Lucifer. He had ambitions. And it made him to be cast down and he landed in Eden as noticed by Ezekiel. He's a writer. And when he was in Eden, the war that began in heaven continued in the minds of men. And who called it the greatest battle ever fought. Started in heaven, but now it was in the minds of men. But where we just read verse 19 of chapter 19 of the book of Revelations, this is 
Armageddon, which is the final part of that war that began in heaven, which came into the mind of man. And now it's on earth. It's between the wicked one, Christ, and his bride. Now, now did you see the picture? Can somebody say amen? Same characters who fought in heaven, who fight here again. Do you see why we are Victory is sure. <laughs> we fought this. You know, in soccer, they call it home and away. <laughs> that you are beaten home and away. So we, we fought the battle home. <laughs> and we fight it away. And we win the battle. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now maybe, may the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let, let's take our seats. Praise be to God. Um, Revelations 20. Uh, I want to read from verse 7. The Bible says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Meaning after the war I just read about. It ushers the world into what we call the millennium. And therein the enemy is bound. So now I'm picking it up after the expiration of the thousand years. Satan is loosed out of his prison. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. <laughs> Wogogo na magogo abakubanga nyera ndwa vane chivaro chavo vanga mutaba wa rwanje vabvera kalinda lashango vatanga vatanga mushasha wabaketwa na mudhi mufunwa hambo wa muriro uchivata duru wabala praise be to god for a subject tero amagidon amagidon and gog and magogo na gogo na magogo amagidon amagidon and gog and magogo and then for a subheading, watch geographically where your war is coming out. Watch geographically where your war is coming out. So by the help and grace of God, I want to trace the life of Malachi 4. And then we see how the life of Malachi 4 identifies with the season we are living in. And more specifically, we want to see how the wars that we see in the book of Revelation chapter 8 and 9 into 11 under the trumpets are manifested in our day. I'm sure for now I don't need to go back to show you what the fifth trumpet is. It is the first woo. The sixth trumpet is the second woo, which is the second world war. And the former is the first world war. And there is a junction between the Second World War and the Third World War. And that junction is Revelation chapter 10. Now, this language you can understand it when you listen to me holding your Bible. Because there is a chronology that takes place. When the trumpets are given out, there is a break. 
on the sixth trumpet. It ends in Revelation 9. And then it just says, Behold, the third who cometh quickly. But God changes the scene. And why does he change the scene? Because these people who are being brought back by the trumpets are Jews. A type of Naomi. But Naomi doesn't come alone. She comes with Ruth. So the picture switches to Ruth. That after the Second World War, Israel becomes a nation. And the same day Israel is declared a nation, William Branham meets an angel in a cave. And he's told, go and take Ruth. Because Naomi cannot go alone. There has to be a bride that goes with Naomi. And Revelation 10.1 is the mighty angel that's Boaz. And Revelation 10.7 is the chief reaper, Malachi 4, William Branham. And Revelation 10.8-11 it is Ruth, the type of us, the bride. So we are called between the Second World War and the Third World War. Is it right? The Second World War was 1939 to 1945. Is it right? Is it right? right? And then that's where we were called because the Third World War is not yet now. The bride must be made ready. Now, this life of William Branham is I'm going to be tracing. Praise God. I, I, I could have given you something, beloved, but I, I think you just have to bear with me because I didn't want to give you the notes like. It's just points. Now, now I, I want you to pay attention. We know William Branham was born in 1909. On the 6th of April. And to be more specific, 5 a.m. And this birth was witnessed by a constellation of stars that proved that a messianic sign has landed upon the earth. And this was not confirmed by message believers, but by astrologers, people that knew not God, are the ones that spoke to William Branham when he was a young man in a bus. A woman called her and told her the day she was born and the time she was born. William Branham didn't understand how. How do you know the time I was born and the day I was born? And the woman said, don't you know the wise men in the time of Daniel? Or the wise men that, that followed the star from the east? I'm one like those. We know you were born under a special star. And you are a special boy. And your success is in the West. Now, now, did you see what we are talking about? Remember when Christ was born, the wise men from the East, and these wise men were under the tautology of Daniel. The teachings of Daniel from the Babylonian Empire were handed from generation to generation until it got to these astrologers, wise men. And they saw the star and they followed it. It led them to Christ. Wise men. I'm not talking about Pharisees, Sadducees, or believers in the Jewish community. I'm talking about supposed heathens. They are the ones that saw the star. 
and followed it and it led them to the word of the hour. So don't be surprised if Billy Graham or all Robert didn't have an idea about what we are talking about. You can search in all the theological books. You can't find this and you, you don't have to find it. So don't be discouraged because it's wise men from the east. The astrologer knew the birth of a, mess, of a messianic sign. Is somebody listening to me? But now this man is born in a time where events are ushering in the coming of a new world order. And the end of the world. Now in 1916, when William Branham was seven years old, and now it was in the midst of the First World War. Because the First World War was 1914 to 1918. So two years within the First World War. When William Branham was seven years old, going to fetch water so that his father can make the illegal whiskey, God spoke to him from a whirlwind, like Job, from a bush like Moses. That's how he mentions it. And what did he tell him? You must not smoke or drink or defile find yourself in anything because I have a work for you. Are you listening to that? It's happening in the midst of the First World War which is the fifth trumpet. People are at war and uh, God is talking to a boy who is seven years old. Now when you take it further, you, you're going to observe, oh my, this is beautiful. I'm sure you know in 19... Um, 18 when the First World War ended. It ended in a miraculous way. In fulfillment of Revelation 7 verse 1. How many remember Revelation 7 1? Praise God. Maybe I'll just read it for the sake of others. Now, Revelation 7, 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four wings of the earth, and that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, now we know these are the angels that stopped the first world war in a miraculous way 11th hour 11th day and 11th month and even up to today, nobody knows how the First World War stopped and who stopped it. But it was the 11th day in the 11th hour. During the 11th month, November, the war was stopped. To fulfill Revelation 7, this one, because we had the 11th hour Gentile and Jewish workers that were supposed to be called out. Why? Because remember the First World War It could have destroyed everybody Is that right? So the reason why it was stopped It is because there were people that were supposed to be called out because you will see the sealing that takes place after, you know, Revelation 7 as you continue with the scriptures. Roughly about 15 to 19 million people were killed in the First World War. Is that right? Are, are we together? Somebody say, Amen. So now the angel, now we know, it's, it's connected. It's the same, the one who stopped the war is the one who spoke to William and told him I have a work for you to do. In 1916, 
1916. And then he is the one that stopped the war. In the preparation of the ministry of this man. Now, you can't afford to sleep on me now. Because some of these things, I may not even repeat them the way I'm saying them. So you need to hear carefully and attentively. Now, are we together? And of course, if you check your history very well, we, we had a Spanish flu that followed, which was actually a pandemic. It occurred from 1918 to 1919. It also killed a lot of people. Is the writer? Right? We're talking about. Uh, 50 to 75 million. 50 to oh. 75 million. And Brother Branham says that plug was a plug that followed the war. Is a writer. Now, now, you're going to see how we are going to tie this thing in our day. Because we also had COVID-19, is that right? But now, this was after the First World War. Now, the second major visitation that William Branham had was in 1933. Is that right? We all know that. In 1933, it was now between the First World War and the Second World War. Because remember, the First World War was 1914 to 1918. All right. If you can make diagrams, it's fine. According to your inspiration. Brother Sham, right? And then this one began in 1939, right? To 1945. Is that right? So 1933 is right here. In 1916, 1916 is right here. William Branham was seven years old here. William Branham Is it making sense? So in 1933, William Branham, William Branham, he gets a visitation at Ohio River. And it was witnessed by hundreds of people. As John the Baptist for the first coming of Christ. Your ministry shall for the second coming of Christ. Christ. And that was in 1933. And the next to that, William Branham, he had seven major visions. And I'm sure you all know those visions. And it was before the Second World War. He was already talking about the kingdoms that will come and the wars that will ensue. Is that right? So he saw Mussolini and that was fascism. In Italy. So you can just make those diagrams if you can. Mussolini, right? In Italy. And that was fascism. Is that right? And he saw Hitler, that is Nazism, in German. What Vladimir Putin is thinking is fighting. And there was Stalin. That was communism in Russia. Then it was Stalin. Is that right? And of course you can put Roosevelt in America. Now it was capitalism. Because Americans are capitalists. Is that right? But William Branham says fascism and Nazism shall be swallowed into to communism. And they will become one thing. Is that right? Now, am I talking to readers here? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. Okay. Okay, the battle of... Okay. Oh, I'd say it Armageddon and Gog and Magog, but it's still fine either way. You can call it Armageddon and Gog and Magog. Or, or even the battles of, or the battle of, uh, and either way. That's your question, isn't it? Yes. Praise be to God. You can just simply call it Armageddon and Gog and Magog. Or, if certain things just need English, brothers. 
Is it simple? Just put it like that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, are we together? Now, we see Mussolini, Hitler, Hitler, Stalin, Stalin, and we see Roosevelt, which are four kingdoms. Italy, Italy Germany, Germany, and Russia, Russia then America. That's fascism, Nazism, swallowed in communism. Until that communism ends up standing against capitalism, which is Americanism under Roosevelt. Is that making sense? Is that making sense? Yeah, are, are you seeing William Branham and are you seeing Daniel? Daniel also saw four kingdoms. How many remember that? He met with an angel and he told him, this head of God is Babylon and we shall have the Medes and Persians. After the Medes and Persians, we have the, the, the Grecians. And after the Grecians, we shall have the Romans. You see the point? Daniel Daniel met with an angel and he was told about the kingdoms to come until the millennium when that stone cut without hands came upon the ten toes and broke the kingdom. And now here William Branham is hearing about four kingdoms as well. Italy, Fascism, Nazism, Communism, and Capitalism. But three will be swallowed into one. And as we speak right now, these are the two kingdoms we have. When you talk about the Soviet Union and NATO, these are Western powers and Eastern powers. It's Communism versus Capitalism. And William Branham prophesied that in 1933. Are you with me? Did you see where we are coming from? Yes. Now, in 1933, that's where that visitation came in the seven, and the seven uh, visions that of Brother Branham. Now, we know in history, when we got into the Second World War, this is the war that was very instrumental in bringing the Jews back to the Promised Land. Those demons which were bound in the river Euphrates, they were set loose and killed over six million Jews until Israel was a nation and connected with my open remarks. The same time William Branham got a visitation to make sure Naomi is accompanied by Ruth. That was the end of the Second World War. It was ushering in a message, a message to call a bride. So the prophet went with a healing campaign, trying to call the bride right up to the third pool so that he can find that Ruth. Because remember, there was Oprah with the healing campaign and the miracles, he called Opa and Ruth. But when we narrowed to the third pool, then Opa kissed the mother-in-law goodbye. And Ruth said, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. And where you be buried, I'll be buried. And that's the language of the bride. Does that make sense? Are we together? So now, that was the second world war. It opened up with William Branham's commission. Like Moses with, with two signs. As a writer. And it gravitated to 1963. Which was the climax of his ministry. That produces us. And he left the scene in 1965. But now there is a junction. After... The Second World War, 1950 to 1953. 1950 to 1953. Now, 
1950, 1950 to 1953, 1953, we have what we call the Korean War that took place. Now, the Korean War is the reason why today we have North Korea and South Korea. South Korea and North Korea. Because these two wars, if you look at them, praise God, they had an element that was influenced by the two powers. North Korea became communistic. North Korea communism. Communism which swallowed fascism and Nazism. And South Korea, South Korea, it became capitalistic. It was supported by America. Now, now that war, it took place the time William Branham was alive. And remember, he witnessed the First World War, the Second World War. And he's talking, I am Malachi 4. The day of the Lord is at hand. We shall burn as an oven. Is that right? Is that right? And, and, and he's talking about, behold, the third who is coming. Then now, after the 1945 war, we had the Korean War. Now, this brought people to think, to say, what is happening? Now, um, maybe let me read some quotes or a quote. Praise be to God. Don't worry, I'll be done very soon. Just listen and you enjoy. If you sleep, you wake up when I'm done. Now, in the spoken word, the angel of the Lord, uh, I'll ask paragraph 11. And I want you to observe, this spoken word was preached in 1951. In 1951, it's in the midst of the Korean War, which is going on. And here is William Branham commenting on the Korean War. And I don't want you to forget, we've got the Russian and Ukraine War. That is taking place. And that is what is prompting me to talk about this. Because there are comments that we can make that our eyes may open and we understand what is taking place. So I'm not preaching history. I'm trying to take you from history so that you understand the present. Amen. Are we together? Now, Brother Branham says, now remember this. Now, this is not the Lord speaking. Now, you must understand this language. Paul would say, it's not, it's not the Lord, it's me. But yet, that word is scripture today. So you don't become loose and say it was not God here. Now, this is not the Lord speaking. This is your brother, Brother Branham. And the best of my knowledge. Now, now just remember this and watch it close. We are in the end. We are in for the end time. Watch geographically where your war is coming out. See? Now, he is saying to these people, watch. The, the scholars that time, they were now thinking this is now the Third World War. When the Korean began to fight. Because remember, they are just coming from another war, which was First World War, now Second World War. Now it's another war in 1950. So now they're thinking, looking at the Bible, Behold, the third war cometh quickly. So according to them, they're saying this is the third world war. And we know the third world war is Armageddon. Revelation 19 verse 19. So Brother Branham is coming to comment now. He's saying, according to the best of my knowledge, he said, watch it close. We are in for the end time. But he says, watch geographically where your war is coming out. Watch Gog 
up there coming down. Down in Turkey and so. The battles would not be settled in Korea, but over there in Palestine. Now, are you listening to the language? He's actually telling them, this war you are thinking is the Third World War, geographically it's not right. Because it will not be in Korea. It will be in Palestine. Now, now, you, you see what he's saying? But he says, watch Gog. Now, I, I'm going to show you who Gog is. The battles will not be settled in Korea, but over there in Palestine. We are near. And I would appreciate. Now, and yesterday or this morning, I believe it was. When I heard that Billy Graham and Billy is going to have a meeting in Washington, you know, I was so happy for that, but I'm just a little afraid that we have seen the way the day of grace. He's going to preach, yes. I believe we are in for it. Now, the part I want you to understand is the prophet is positioning a war for you. A heated war that made a country to have two nations out of one. He's talking to scholars. He's talking to politicians. He's talking to historians. He's saying, geographically, this cannot be because of the location. And this is 1951. Now, are we together? Now, In 1954, question and answers, the first court, paragraph 47, or it's paragraph 312, but there's a question which is 47. Oh, yes. Oh, you're putting headings for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I wanted that, actually. If you can do that for all the courts, it will be much clearer. Now, the question is, will the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39 be fulfilled before the rapture? That's Ezekiel what? 30. Is it 38 or 37 and 38? Or 38 and 39? So we've got Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, 36 and 37. 37. Are we together? Rotena. And Ezekiel 38, 38 and 39. 39. Now I want you to see the difference between this. Now I, I may not have time to go through this lest I derail. But when you come to Ezekiel 36, it is talking about the restoration of Israel. Remember, Ezekiel was part of the people that went into Babylonian captivity. Isn't it? Daniel, Daniel, Ezekiel was part of them. Ezekiel was actually in the group of the craftsmen. But Ezekiel, he lived in both dispensations. He lived in the dispensation in and out. Is it making sense? He, he, he lived throughout. So he speaks about the restoration of Israel out of Babylon. Does that make sense? So his prophecy, it is talking about our day. Though it's talking about Israel in shadow from Babylon. Now, 36 and 37, that's where you're going to get, you know, I'll take you from amongst the nations. I'll sanctify you. I'll give you a new name, a new heart, and my spirit. And it's the vision in chapter 37 of the dry bones in the valley. That hopeless Israel now will become a mighty army. 
He's talking about the restoration of the nation of Israel. Out of death. Out of bones, sinews, and flesh grows, and it becomes a mighty army. But Ezekiel 38 and 39, it's not talking about a prophecy against Gog. And it brings Gog and Magog a war. But, but now look at how it's coming. This war, don't sleep on me. This war is taking place after restoration. Does it make sense? When you say Gog and Magog, it's a war coming after restoration. Israel is restored as dry bones. And after it's brought back, like in the Second World War, it was brought back. After that, a war comes. And now they're asking William Branham. Now this time it's in 1954. To say, will the prophecy of Ezekiel 38 and 39 be fulfilled before the rapture. Now, listen to what Brother Branham says. He says, I think not. I think the next thing we look for is the rapture of the church. And then that, when Gog and Mago comes down, is the Russian armies who comes. Is a writer. Praise be to God. Now, the prophet then shows you what Gog and Magog is. And he says, is the Russian armies Am I preaching too fast, Brother Manda, or this is fine? Yes, because I'm not understanding why others are missing things. When you doze, it means you are lost. Because you can't doze at this kind. Yes, there are things that can make you doze because you're not getting them. But with the time we are living in, right now with what's happening with the Wagner and the Russians and Ukraine, you, you must be up because... There is no commentary about it except in the message. So, there is no way else you're going to get it except in the spoken word. You can go to BBC, you can go to Weon, you can go to First Point, you can go everywhere. CNN, you can't get this. It's in the message of the hour. So, if it's the only place, you must be attentive. Can I get an amen? amen. So Brother Branham here is talking with people who were believing that the bride will go into the tribulation. So he's answering them that no, the next thing we're looking for is the rapture, not the tribulation. Does that make sense? And then he says, then when Gog and Mago comes down, is the Russian armies. Now, now there is something very technical that you must be able to catch. Can I wrap this? All right. There is something technical that, that I want you to catch. And then it will help you understand where we are coming from. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the third war, it has to do with Gog and Magog. But the first part of it is before the millennium. We call it Armageddon. But the next part of Gog and Magog is after the millennium when it ends. And now there is a little space of time between the millennium and the new heavens. You get the point? M is millennium. And NH is new heavens. You get the point. So now, 
Revelation 19, verse 19, it happens just before the millennium. You call that Armageddon. But after the millennium, there is a space between the millennium and the new heavens and earth. Because remember, millennium is not new heaven and earth. Millennium is not eternity. Millennium, you are still in time. It's a thousand years. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But now between that millennium and the new heaven and earth, that's where you're going to find Gog and Magog. Are you with me? But now when you look at Gog and Magog, we are categorizing it with Armageddon as the first part. Huh? Is that right? And the second part is Gog and Magog, which is between the millennium and the new heaven. So, if you fail to position these walls as the bride, it's like those who are failing to position the Korean War in the time of the prophet. And those who are failing to position the war in Ukraine right now in the scriptures. Because it has a place. Is that right? Now, where was I? Then, Brother Branham then shows you that Gog and Magog are the Russian armies. Now, now, then you begin to understand from the quote that we read in 1951, is that right? When he says you must watch geographically, is that right? He says, Uri, Watch Gog up there coming down. Is that right? Watch Gog up there coming down. Then you know that Russia is talking about. To say, don't look at Korea. Watch Gog up there. Because remember, he says, in the visions of 1933, watch Gog, watch Russia, king of the north. Korea is, where is Korea? Is it, it's Asia, is it right? Korea is Asia. So he's looking at Asia, actually, with LeBron, to say the geographical location. Watch the north. That's where the issue is coming from. So it's like a man looking at a map, trying to give theologians and scholars the idea of scripture and what is taking place. Praise be to God. Amen and amen. amen. So in the second court, God being misunderstood. Paragraph 102, question number 143. Brother Branham is asked another question. But this one is in 1961. Will Ezekiel 38 and 39 come to pass before the rapture? Now, Ezekiel 38 and 39 now, if you notice, it's the prophet commenting. Ezekiel 38 and 39 deals with Gog and Magog, which is Russia, the north country. Now, I do not say that this is correct, but to my own way of teaching it, you see the language of the prophet. 
that it comes to pass after the rapture. When the church is taken up, God deals with Gog and Magog. When they come down before Israel there, is that right? And I think that it will come to pass after the rapture. Now, that doesn't make it so. Now, that doesn't make it so. See, but that's just my way of teaching it. I suppose that's what they wanted to know, what my idea was. <laughs> Did you see where the prophet is placing it? It's further vindicating our interpretation of Revelation 19. Because Revelation 19 geographically is located in Palestine. And this war, it is emanating from the Second World War. It's a, a, a war for oil. I'm sure you know Israel is one of the richest countries now. Population over 9 million now. I'm talking about that small country that was persecuted during the Holocaust. It's now a nuclear power. It is surrounded by Arabian countries, but she defends herself. Israel can fight for herself. Nobody can do anything. Scientifically, they're advanced. Military, they're advanced. Intelligence, their national intelligence, they're advanced. But it's just a nation that was born in 1945. Now, now did you see the blessing of God there? Are you seeing the blessing of God? But now, Israel, we know it has found oil on the Golden Heights. On the Golden Heights. And the, the, the Dead Sea, is that right? It, it has got rich minerals. And you must know these two powers, what you call NATO and communism, they are after that. But when you speak about NATO, who is really after that? It's not Ahab. It's Jezebel. Because Jezebel is the one behind NATO. Capitalism. Are we together? Praise be to God. Are we together? Amen and amen. Now, now, watch what's taking place. So, I, I don't have time, but I could trace for you the wars from the Second World War. The, the wars that were, were targeted at, at, at Israel. Proxy wars, how, how, how the two powers, the and you can actually call them the ten toes now. Because Brad Branham, he speaks about, I think it's 65, Khrushchev and Eisenhower. Not 65, 59. Was it 59? I think it should be 59. When, when these two... Uh, they had meetings, Russia and, uh, 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 and America, the time that he took off his shoes. Is it right? I think it's right around that time. But I'll correct the year if it's not. But I think around that time, I think it was around the season of 59, it's, it, yeah, somewhere there. Praise God. And, and when, when it took place, the problem showed you that Khrushchev and Eisenhower, these are all 10 letters. Which types the ten toes? And that one is clay and one is iron, the definition. Yes, it was actually 59. Because then, when you see the ten toes, what are you expecting? A stone cut without hand. So, William Branham, when he was saying to them, Scripture has been fulfilled. According to the prophecy of Daniel, he's saying, now we are waiting for that stone. In 1963, the head stone came with shoutings of grace. Meaning everything was coming in line in the fulfillment of scripture. Praise be to God. So these two 
superpowers. America, America NATO, NATO, Western influence, NATO capitalism, standing in conflict with communism, which had swallowed fascism and Nazism. Russia is fighting herself. Because Nazism is there. It's in communism. Did you see the point? Now, now. These two powers, praise be to God, they were fighting proxy wars so that they can benefit. War is expensive, brother. One bomb can cost millions. I'm talking about the bombs that they are using, the missiles. Others, they can cost so much. So think about the money they are using for weapons. It tells you the value of what they are fighting for. They can use in Syria there, Iran. Ammunition that costs millions when there's nothing to benefit. America is not fool, a fool. America is tea. Russia is not foolish. Russia is These guys know what they're doing. Maybe Africa doesn't know what he's doing yet. Sometimes I feel pain when I see Africa, you know. I, I just don't know. I, I, I just want to close my eyes. It's okay. Where are they going? To do what? You, you, you can feel that. Now they're being accused that they're coming to beg for food. They're not trying to negotiate war. Peace. May God give us grace. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm not an African. <laughs> because if I was an African, I'll be in the same problem. Praise God. <laughs> oh, some people are looking at me. <laughs> Say, Aren't you an African? I'm not an African. I'm a Christian. I come from another world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not influenced by African principles or Western principles. I come from another world. We're a parallel universe. That's why we can speak this kind of language. Praise God. Yeah, the, the role of Africa is ceremonial. The role of Africa in these things is ceremonial. You know, when you say ceremonial, a ceremonial role, let, let's say there is a part of a birthday party that is very important. And then your child wanted to play that party, that, that part rather, at that party. Is that right? But the part passes. The mother has already done the part. Is that right? And we know we have already sung the cake has been cut. But the child is saying, I was the one who was supposed to do something. Then you can call the baby and say, let's do it again. You know, but we know it's done. It's just a ceremonial part so that the child feels better. That's what Africa is doing. Africa doesn't have a part in this or even influence in it. It's a ceremonial role. When you see these African presidents being hugged by these Russians and Americans smiling, they are looking at them and saying, these are our grandchildren. There is no autonomy, brother. We are not talking on an equal footing with those people. That, that's why the rand goes down when there is an allegation that South Africa gave weapons to Russia. Just an allegation, brother. Information not verified. Maybe an ambassador who's just having a problem with South Africa, he comments irresponsibly, but that commander makes the rand go down. The stock exchange, everything is influenced. There is no autonomy, brother. In other words, they don't expect South Africa to make a decision without consulting with America. They don't say it by words. Watch the stock market. It's a language. It's a language. 
So you, you agree with me? I, I'm not mocking Africa, but that's the reality. They are made to play a part which is done already. Their contribution has no effect. Their visit cannot change nothing. You think Putin can listen to, Russia, to South Africa? If, if Putin cannot listen to China, he, would you listen to South Africa? South Africa, which is looking for aid from Russia, then you expect him to listen to South Africa. You rather listen to China because with China, they are more on an equal footing. But Africa is playing a ceremonial role. And God give us grace. Praise be to God. Somebody say amen. Now do you see where we are coming from? Now I'm trying to show you that the target between these walls they, they are trying to gain. They are not losing by paying money to, to, for weapons. They know there is more value than the weapons are. And now I want you to see Gog and Magog now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise be to God. In the Laodicean Church Age, paragraph 43 and 44, I send them as two separate quotes if you observe. 43 says, 43 you can still put headings, you are allowed. Now, we believe that the Laodicean Church started in AD 1906. Now, I predict, now remember, predict. Especially you listening at the tape. I, I don't say it will be, but predict that it will end by 1977. And the church will go completely into apostasy and she'll be ousted out of the mouth of God. And the second coming, or the rapture of Christ might come anytime. Is that right? Now, I could miss that a year. I can miss 20 years. I could miss it a hundred years. I don't know where it, but I just predict that according to a vision he showed me. Of the four kingdoms, right? And taking the time, the way it's progressing, I say it will be sometime between 33 and 77. At least, this great nation is going to strike a war that's going to blow it to bits. It will blow out of existence, into nothing. And now that's pretty close. It's awful close. And I could be wrong. I'm predicting everybody understand. Say amen if you do. So the prophet is showing you the fourth power now. Is that right? From Fascism, Nazism, Communism, and now Capitalism. And he shows the judgment of America. Is that right? Which is connected to what? 44. But the Lord showed me a vision of the great powerful woman in 1933. 1933. It's on paper. Of how that Roosevelt would cause, I mean, he'd cause the world to go to war. <laughs> how that Mussolini <laughs> would make his first invasion to Ethiopia and he would take it. <laughs> but he would come to a disgraceful end. <laughs> and how that the three isms, Nazism, Fascism, and Communism, would all wind up in. Communism. How many here remembers me? Just keep, you have a stand, say it over. Uh, uh, how many remember that? How many remember I just spoke about it? Praise be to God. If you stand, say it over, I'll, I'll tell you, watch 
Russia. Watch Russia, the king of the north. Like I made you stand and say it over. Watch Russia. Watch Russia, king of the north. Watch Russia. King of the north. Watch Russia. King of the north. How many has heard me just say? Just wave that over and over. The old timers, you see, back in the early part of the church. Just stand there and wave it over. Watch Russia, the king of the north. See what he would do for all those isms who heap up into Russia. Is it making sense? Praise be to God. So the prophet has brought all of them now. And it's showing how they're ending. Praise be to God. Now in the restoration of the bright tree, he says, now therefore, we find out that it will, it's communism is gathered together. God said Gog and Magog who gather together sure to bring about the battle. That's exactly true. Because it's going to bring these forces together. It has come to the Bible said so. So it will bring these forces together. Now, Russia is key and instrumental in all these things that we are talking about. In the battle of Gog and Magog, which its first part is Armageddon, before the millennium. Is a writer. But after the rapture. Is a writer. And the second part, which is after the millennium, but before the new heavens and earth. In between. Are, are we together? So it will bring these forces together. So, as we are seeing right now in 2023, forces are being brought together. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing that nations are identifying with nations? Yes, people are finding refuge in one another. Forces yes, are being brought together. Iran knows this place now. North Korea knows its place. North Korea, yeah, the Bible, no, no, South Iran. Africa is getting to its place right now. South Africa, yes. Hey. Because they want to oust the dollar, isn't it? Yes, the prophet speaks about the destruction of the money system, isn't it? No, it's Daniel, actually. <laughs> the book of Daniel it speaks about that, and the, the prophet speaks about it, that the beast will destroy the money system. Is that right? And why? Why? Because they must put gold as a standard. And she has all the gold. And as you are speaking right now, I'm sure you know what's happening in Zimbabwe. Yes, it's projecting something. They're already putting gold as a standard. Did you hear about that? Yes. And it must come to that globally. Where gold becomes the standard. And when it's the standard, that's when you're going to realize who is who. So people will be thinking, <laughs> uh, we are, you, you know a chase game. Or draft. You know draft, eh? What do you call it, draft? Of those checkers, bottle containers. Leads of, yes. When you're playing murabarawa, and you know it very well, you can make five moves as if you don't know what you're doing. So that you can get a bob. You call it a bob. The, the, to put two of them on top. Mm -mm, bob. When you reach the end, isn't it? You graduate and you have a bob. You, isn't it you'll be using leads of, of Coca-Cola? And when you enter to the end, you, you have two leads on one. And then that one can fly. Oh, it's not Marabarawa. It's not Marabarawa, ne? So this one, what do you call it? 
When people are at the bar and they are playing, pushing those things, like a chess, but it's the African chess. Yeah. You know it, eh? Right there. What do you call it in Sped? It has no name, eh? We call it draft. Yes. So that thing, when you are playing it, there are times you can give in, you get beaten. You give in, you get beaten. And you're opening gaps. And then with one, you go like one, two, three, four, five. And then you go to the end. And you eat seven at a time. It's called Mutoga. Now you got it. <laughs> Praise God. And then now there you start to move with more power like a queen in a chest. Is that right? Now, now did you see my point? Now, when Rome is working, it can sacrifice certain things. Because when the US dollar is being ousted, you think Rome is losing. You think America is losing. They are not. They are giving the ponies so that you eat the ponies. But look at the king, it's going to be hit soon. So it's a calculated thing. <clears throat> they know what they're doing. After you out that US dollar, you are playing according to the plan. Brother used to play boxing. And he preached in context and he says, when you are aspiring an enemy, you must know and study your enemy. I'm not saying do boxing. Eh? <laughs> yes. you, before he repented, Brother was a boxer. So sometimes, when you study your enemy, you, you can accept as if you are being beaten. So that you can find a real opening to hit and the person goes for good. So bricks. Uh, and you see these countries who want to oust the US dollar. They are playing according to the plan. So let them act like they are winning. Let them be happy. Let them be happy. Then we can put the gold standard. And once it's there, you know what happens, brother. You can't sell, you can't buy. Everything is owned by Rome. Praise be to God. Now, now, watch what's happening. In the midst of all that, he's saying watch Russia because it's bringing the forces together. Is that right? It's bringing the, the forces together. And all of it, it will wind up into that battle. Now, Brother Branham says, Okay, listen to what Brother Branham says, yeah? But it's not going Branham Ambassador Nepal. Uh, in the spoken word, um, the angel of the Lord. He says, you remember church. That you're living in the best day you've ever lived in. Right now, until Jesus comes, it shall gradually and rapidly get worse and worse. When Russia goes down there to get that oil, look out. That's all she needs. That's what the prophet said it would do. And we are ready for it then. Now he say, Daniel says they'll go there to get spoils. 
the book of Daniel, it speaks spoils. And the prophet says, when Russia goes in to get oil, now, 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 remember I said, watch geographically where the war is coming from. So, you are not worried about the war in Ukraine. No, you are not worried about that. Because geographically, it's not where it is supposed to be. But, but the prophet is saying, now, now, you must watch. What are you supposed to watch? It's going to get worse and worse. Gradually and rapidly. And Russia, when she gets down there to get that oil, look out. That's all she needs. So do you see where your eyes are now, brother? You're watching Russia, but not in Ukraine. You're seeing the forces getting together. But you know it's going to get worse. Rapidly. But what you're watching for is when Russia tries to go get that oil. He says, look out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you with me? The beginning and the ending of the Gentile dispensation. Now Daniel, Daniel is given this assurance at the end of the Gentile dispensation. You read when you go home and tomorrow. And read the 11th chapter. You, you can see how the king of the north is coming down. I'm sorry, I'm not yet there, but I'm still coming to Daniel chapter 11. Eh? But, which is nothing else but Russia. Coming down to praise against it. Like a whirlwind. And the great battle of Armageddon will be fought right there near the gates of Jerusalem. Oh, how I love this. Are you with me now? Do you see how the prophet is bringing it now? He's positioning Revelation 19, verse 19. It will be right at the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Now, in question and answers 1963, Brother Branham says in paragraph 216, you have said it many times. Now, this is the person asking a question. It's paragraph 367, but this is a question. You have said it many times that communism was raised up by God to serve his purpose as King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, where did communism fit into the picture that it will, that will, it will finally, what it will finally do? How does it wind up? Many scholars believe that the kingdom of the north, Gog and Magog, mentioned in the scriptures, goes down against Israel. I can't make out just what that is. Yes. I, is the prophet commenting, I guess. I, I, I believe some of these tips are taken, you know. You, you said it will finally, that communism would finally destroy Catholicism. Uh, or the Vatican, Vatican by an explosion. Is this right? So he's asking Brother Branham a question. That you said Russia is like Nebuchadnezzar and it's working in the hands of God. And eventually, it must destroy the Vatican in an explosion, which is the Catholics. And Brother Branham answers and he says, Yes, Revelation 16, now he's giving the scripture. You find it in Revelations 18, 18, and 12. 18, 8, and 12. If the, if the person here wants to take this piece of paper on that, you can look it up right, right up. See, alas, alas, that great city. 
For in one hour she has come to an end. You see the mentions and everything else that brought her mention ties, it will be that's right. Are you listening to this language? Yeah. He's agreeing yeah. with the question. Yeah. Now just quit, just forget about communism. See? It's nothing in the world but a bunch of people that's nothing but barbarians that's ungodly. It's a system. Let me show you something. Just show you how simple it is. Where there is only 1%. Why? There is, why? There is only 1% of all Russia that's communism. They need a messenger, see? 1%, then 99% of all of them are still on Christian side. 1% and how can 1% control 99%? That ought to explain it to you right there. If God didn't permit it, they would be thrown out long ago. See, sure. Are you understanding this language? So God is showing you the position of Russia. It's in the hands of God. That's why we are watching Russia. Russia. Not because Putin has weapons. That's not why we are following Russia or watching Russia. It's because it is in the hands of God. I don't know if you are getting it. There are times you are following the person, not what is being held. When God is done with Russia, we don't follow Russia. We look where God goes. But as we speak right now, Russia is an instrument that must be used by God. Nineteen sixty three. Nineteen sixty three. Two oh nine, right? Two oh nine. Brother Branham is asked. Is the question in answer again? Do you see these things are there? That's right. Would you please explain about Satan being bound a thousand years and being loosed for the battle of Revelation 20, verse 8? What relationship does this have with the battle of Armageddon as mentioned in the fourth seal? Will Gog and Magog be gathered from the people of the new heaven? Or new earth, rather? And Brabham say, well, this is a long one, and I'll just have to hit the spot of it. See? Now, the first thing, now, maybe I can't explain it, I'll, I'll do my best. And then he reads the second question in that. He reads the second question. Will you please explain how Satan is bound a thousand years, being loosed again for the battle of Revelation 20, verse 8? These are two questions, right? Now, that is not the battle of Armageddon. Are you listening now? The battle of Armageddon takes place on this side. See? All right. At when the tribulation period has ended. Are you understanding that? That's where Armageddon takes place. Now, what relation does this have with the battle of Gog and Magog? None. One is in this thousand years, and the other one is in the end of the thousand years. As mentioned in the fourth seal, will Gog and Magog be gathered from the peoples of the new earth? 
Satan was loosed out of his prison and went to gather all the people, the wicked, to bring them to this place. And God rained fire and brimstone out of heaven. And they were consumed, see? And he says, two battles all together. In other words, when we say Russia is Gog and Magog, we are not talking about the battle on the other side. We are talking about Armageddon. Russia won't be in existence after the millennium. So these battles are two separate battles. The issue are the titles that Gog and Magog refers to Russia as well. But the battle that Russia will influence is called Armageddon. But after the millennium, we have what we call Gog and Magog. And it's not Russia. So these are two battles. The Lord bless you as the musicians come. Praise be to God. The battle of Armageddon and Gog and Magog. Watch geographically where your war is coming out. You see, like the Korean War, there was a misconception among scholars and historians. They actually thought it was the Third World War. But geographically, it wasn't. And even what's taking place in Russia and Ukraine and the possible mutiny is just to bring the forces together. But it shall go worse and worse. But geographically speaking, that's not the third world war we are talking about. The third world war was called Armageddon and it will be at the gates of Jerusalem. Russia, king of the north, the one you must watch, it must go after the oil in Russia, in, in Israel. And when that is taken place, that is when you find the battle of Armageddon. But how are you going to see that? Because you won't be here when that happens. So it shows you how close you are. Because if people are already thinking we are stepping into third world war, the Russian commentators, they were saying this is going to lead into an Armageddon. I'm sure you heard that. You, you get the point. But you must know the Armageddon will not take place when you are here. You should have been raptured already. You are the one that will intervene for Israel. Israel. You're part of those on white horses that come with Michael. Is that making sense? So when you hear people talking about the Armageddon is closed, that is after the rapture. So how close are we? If the prophet says it will get worse and worse, he says rapidly so. It will bring these forces together. So you begin to see, brother. It's really later than we think. When you are checking this, geographically, it's not in Ukraine. But positionally as the bride, we must be preparing to go a little higher because we can't be found on the same geographical position with the foolish virgins. Our geography must be divine. Another dimension. Having the marriage supper. After we've eaten and have enjoyed for three and a half good years, we are going to hear a siren that will be praised by Russia, by Israel rather, to say, Father, I need help. Their nations have gathered against me. Is that right? They're all around me. They want to take over. And then God says, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not hold my peace. Bride, my wife, 
Let's go down and push the enemy back. He wants to touch your type. He wants to touch my wife. He wants to touch Jerusalem. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not hold my peace. How many see what we're talking about? That's what we're talking about. These two battles. Amen and amen. amen. I am the resurrection. You know the song, right? Can you play it? I am the resurrection. Can you give us? Praise be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you the resurrection in the life? How many love him today? Let's sing this song with understanding. He then are you now gathered? What key? Bambani, the right key. How are you gathered against me once again? Heathens, how are you gathered against me once again? And yet this time. No weapons. But no weapon from against me shall prosper. Your wicked deeds I shall defy. For I shall live and prophesy. I am.
saying I won't pass through the tribulation no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper when they come to squeeze you in a moment in it quickly fight the Lord shall take you and you are fighting this battle again the third time you were in Michael the first time it was fought and it has been won it was won and you have overcome the devil again in your mind casting every reasonings and imaginations that exalted themselves above the word of God it means you won the battle in the mind and surely at Armageddon you are going to win it again praise be to God and what takes place at Gog and Magog that will be another story from the millennium after the white throne judgment you shall raise the sleeping saints because you are there to judge the world is that making sense how many love the Lord how many believe this how many identify with this language how many see their geography we will be in heaven amen and amen How many feel that the more you see him is the more you love him? We just want to say that as we are going to pray. Praise be to God. The more I seek you, the right key. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you. The more I love, raise it one semi to another. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you, the 
more I love you The more I trust you All together I wanna sit at your feet Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is ordeal. It's more than I can stand. It's overwhelming. just want to bow our heads to the Lord and make it our declaration presented with this great truth what manner of person ought you to be in holy conversation and conduct if you're not living up to your calling this end time vocation allow the Holy Ghost to come and align you so that you can see things appropriately and you know how to behave yourself looking at the nearness of the hour we are living in yes thank you Lord make it your desire I want to sit at your feet drink from the cup in your hand lay back against you and breathe feel your heart beat this love is so deep it's more than I can stand I melt at your feet it's overwhelming I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat, this love is so It's more than I can stand I melt It's overwhelming The more I seek you The more I find you, the more I find you, the more I love you. The more I love you, the more I trust you. Granted, Lord, I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand lay back 
against you and breathe feel your heart beat this love is so deep it's more than I can stand I melt in your peace it's overwhelming Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you, my Lord. Every breath that I take Every moment I'm awake Lord, have your way in me Let it be all about you All about you about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the things I've made when it's all about you all about you Jesus I'm sorry you can do about it 
All you need is to surrender and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. I want to believe if you were not meant to be the bride, you are not going to hear what you are hearing. We believe it's fresh manna, spiritual food in due season, rock beneath the rock to align the bride and give you assurance that your father is in control and he knows what's going on and what comes next. But as he has spoken unto you through the voice of the mighty angel, make yourself ready. He is declaring his nearness not to the battle of Armageddon but to the translation. We are looking at different directions. The world they are looking forward to the Armageddon. You are looking forward to the translation. And if your focus had been contaminated by the knowledge of this life, the laxity and pleasures and cares of this dimension, you want God to come, anoint you with eyes of, like he anointed soul of Tarsus and he restored his sight. He began to see. I believe today the Lord can equip you with the right kind of desperation, the right kind of reverence, the right kind of attitude that matches what is before you. Russia and Ukraine is not your problem. Geographically, it's not aligned like the Korean War. But we are standing at this junction. God, soon, very soon, we're going to hear a voice come up a little higher. Come up a little higher. You hear a voice. Are you willing to defy gravity and be with me? Like Ruth, we shall be fully united with our kinsmen. He who purchased us by his blood is going to claim us by his grace. If you're here, you're saying, Lord, swallow me in this present reality that I may be part of this knowledge, not in intellect, but from the heart. Lovely Heavenly Father, I come in your presence this afternoon. Thankful for your word and this season that has dawned on us where you can give us this kind of knowledge about Armageddon and Gog and Magog. Indeed, you said still not the sayings of this book. And we are expecting more this year. Because you spoke to us through the prayer that you prayed through us. Open this year, Lord, the hidden manner. And we cannot afford to think like the world and look and view things like the world when you've been called higher under this calling. Hearts are opened, hands are raised, lives are surrendered to you. The request is just simple. Be it unto us according to your word. Let thy will be done in and through our lives. Indeed,
by our might and our strength, we cannot make it. It has to be that resurrection life in us. The song says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Let it come through upon every life and condition and raise us out of our condemnation, our mistakes and failures, our doubts and fears, our intellectualism into a world of reality where the word of God is substance that we can reduce doctrine to practice we know it's possible especially at this junction of time we see the noises around the king of the north We see them two powers you spoke about, Western and East, NATO, the Soviet Union, reviving. But all these things, we know they're going to get worse and worse until the lines will focus back to Israel. Yet this language, Lord, is not for our protection because we will not be part of it. It's just a reminder of the place we are supposed to be. Detach us from the love of the things of this world. Pluck us from the cares of this life. May we not be entangled until we are drunken and blinded like Belshazzar that he could not even see judgment coming but we want to be awake like Daniel two years before the fulfillment he was already praying for instruction about the exit out of this dimension of Babylon and that's what we are looking for Lord that when we see these things we can contact you and receive instructions on how we are going to leave this dimension of time. It's our prayer. It's our petition. It's our desire. That we can afford that quality of spirit in us. That transcends the pollutions of this age. Thank you for everyone here. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your care. We feel your care. That surely you didn't die in vain. Neither did you bleed in vain. Or carry that old rugged cross for no reason. The purpose is quite clear now. As we see you raising us from glory unto glory. We can tell we are the reason of your death. And for this cause we were raised that we can do what we are ordained to do as the embodiment of deity, the expression of your magnificence. Oh, thank you, Lord, for hearing every prayer and answering every request and honoring every soul, both visible and invisible. As we have come to the end, May you help us to go home under this atmosphere. Trusting the leadership of the Holy Ghost until we are united with thee. Help us to look at this map, the Bible, right? Until everything will be a reality knowing we came from God, we go back to God. We are not blacks, whites, Africans, Europeans. We are Christians, sons and daughters of God. Thank you. As we surrender and commit all into your hands. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. And we all say amen. Amen and amen. I'm willing to trust you.
through your eyes. You said all things. You said all things were together. Gracious Lord, we give thanks and we appreciate you more and more and more. Continue to show forth your grace and your magnificence amongst us. Continue to bring off a measure of loving kindness and grace as we partake in of that we can continually behold your kindness, your generosity before us. We thank you. We love you. And we salute thee. Guide us from now going forward as we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Let's give a mighty hand of praise. <laughs> Amen and amen and amen. Praise be to God. God richly bless your friends. 
We've come to the end of our service. God bless you, invisible audience. We'll meet again on Tuesday by God's grace. It's come prayed up under expectation. How many have been blessed? Praise God. How many can say money cannot buy this? This is better than rubies. Let's hold fast what we have had. Let it not slip while the devil steal it away. Let's rise to our feet. We want to sing Strengthen My Hands for War.
And to me that my pride is seen For Alpha must become Omega The Word made flesh again oh. Till we meet again, God bless you Thank you, Jesus. And overcome, won't you strengthen my hands?